Before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the support I received from you. And as always, all the information in my videos is rumors taken from the internet or the street. I'm not saying the information is fact. Don't pick your mans up. Yeah, that's because people used to come through shooting us every day. Yeah, this block, uh, words can't even explain. Man. Can't even explain. Hey, man, let's go rally over our way on money. Yo, money, man, they in the building. 600 boy, LA, man. LA Capone, man. Get in tune, man. Don't see two boys, man. Team Mark, two, number nine, man. Number nine, shooter, you hear me? You have to be willing to die or go to jail for a hundred years if that's the lane that you're stepping in. You have to understand that whether you're 15, 16, you got to think like a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, so don't be in it. Oh, you're not? Uh, Why does everybody say you're only 16 years old? They say what they want to say. How old so are you? How old are you? 300. <laughs> The story of DB, aka Biko, Taekwon World. This is the story of Terry Mubarak Berry, also known as DB, or Biko which was his nickname on the street. Like all the other stories I have made about gang members, this one is also a sad story. A boy who was good in school and participated in several different school projects, including a project against gang violence. D.B. was also a guy who liked martial arts and focused a lot on boxing and martial arts in middle school to be able to defend himself and his friends. It was also a way for him to stay away from the street. The road to and from training became an increasing problem as Terry got older towards the end of high school, as he had to take the bus through a few different neighborhoods to get there, and that's not a safe thing to do in Chicago. He started to bring a gun to training, and after several fights in other areas of the city as well as in school, and after several friends were killed, Terry himself became involved in the gang life, more or less involuntarily. It was more about survival. He got deeper and deeper into the destructive life, taking the lives of several people which would eventually cost his own life. Terry was born on January 28th. 1996 in Chicago, Illinois, on the south side of town. D.B. was the son of King D.B., who was a well-respected OG from Paxtown and is even seen as a legend from Paxtown. According to D.B. himself, he had heard endless stories from older members of Paxtown about his father. He was a big hustler who withdrew large sums of money. Sadly, T.B. never got the chance to meet his father because he died eight months before T.B. was born. T.B. grew up without his father, however, he had a stepfather who was there for large parts of his life. King T.B. died very young, he never made it to see the age of 20 and died only 19 years old. In 2016, when T.B. turned 20, he described it as a very special birthday because his father never got to see that day and that he felt blessed. D.B. often tweeted about his father, that he wished he was alive and that things would have been different if he was still alive. Although D.B. never got the chance to meet his father to see how he was as a person, he looked up to him. D.B. also had a cousin from Paxtown named Woody who did an interview in 2017 where he said he had lost over 30 friends to gun violence. When T.B.'s father died, his mother moved to the south side in the 6200 block of S. Eberhard Avenue to be precise, and gave birth to Terry, whom she raised. To my knowledge, D.B. had no siblings, at least none known or who moved in the same circles as him. However, he had his friends on the street who he saw as his brothers.
That's real good. I want to know, man, how many people have you lost to these streets? Man. Shout out some names, man. Some of the guys. About 30. At least about 30. I can name a few that just my homie Lizak just died about a week ago. Uh, My homie Twan. I lost my little homie Jaleel right down here on Crandon in front of the stove. I lost my other homie um, Mo down here in front of the Jeffrey Sub. So, you know, I lost about a little 30 guys though. Like, I probably, it's probably a little bit more to know that, but I can at least say 30 off top though. Yeah. My name is Trey A, man. Hey, Phil. These streets are everybody. Man. Hey, As a child, Terry Berry attended Sexton Elementary School. In middle school, Terry was a part of this series in the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper about violence reduction strategies and the importance of recreation. Terry was in fifth grade and contributed to this story sharing about how gang violence in his neighborhood affected his ability to play at the park, and how he enrolled in martial arts for protection. Later, Terry became serious and dedicated to boxing. Boxing kept him focused and off the streets, for a long time. But just like I said in the beginning of this video, the road to and from training eventually became too dangerous for DB. He needed to take the bus through several different hoods which was dangerous. DB therefore began to bring a weapon to the training to be able to protect himself in case something should happen. However, in the end the danger became too great and TB stopped training completely. Like many other young people from the area, D.E.B. went to high school at Dunbar which was a school that was pretty much filled with GD members from Jaro City, STL slash EBT, Brick Squad and Mob. However, there were also a few members from 600 and Wick City at Dunbar. For example, both L.A. Capone and Buka from 600 attended Dunbar and Ochomana from Wick City. According to T. Capone, L.A. Capone was very exposed at Dunbar. Apparently he got beat up pretty badly nearly every week, and there are also rumors that both Buka and Ocho watched L.A. Capone get beat up without doing anything, however I do not know if that is true. Jaro City but especially D.B. and his best friend Poppy pretty much ran Dunbar. A teacher who was really close to D.B., and who was there for him and many of his friends, told in a blog post about D.B. that people were afraid to fight him. TB could really throw hands because of his boxing and martial arts training. TB used to beat up a lot of people in school and at one point, during his senior year, him and Poppy allegedly started a riot, where the whole school started fighting which resulted in the police coming to the school and shutting it down temporarily. There were often fights and even shootings outside Dunbar, much like Hyde Park, everyone knows by now that King Bun shot up Dunbar together with L.A. Capone. M. Thang and Mikado after blast his ass got jumped by Brick Squad members. OB600 really hated Dunbar and often went there looking for members from Jaro and STL slash EBT. You feel me? I had to drop out of high school, nigga, because folks knew where I was here. They was niggas from my hood one standing on that business. LA going to Dunbar, getting his fucking brains beat in every week. I'm hearing about this shit while I'm in school. I'm hearing about I'm hearing about all this shit. You feel me? I'm 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 seeing this shit happen to my homie. I come back from the hood. You feel me? Motherfuckers getting that oh 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 yeah woo. They just call LA. I see LA. LA got fucking 
He looked like a skeleton, folks. On BDS, both his eyes black, his nose got a bump in it all type of shit, folks. You feel me? Like, they done beat my homie three, four times. I'm steady going to school out there. I can't even rock out with my nigga, folks. Cause folks so gangster, he gonna keep going to school because he ain't finna make them think they moved them out of school. You feel me? All type of niggas then stopped going to school with folks. There was so many niggas in Dunbar that just all of a sudden, when the ops got in that bitch, like everybody wanted to go to Dunbar when when the BDs was deep as hell in Dunbar. Soon as motherfuckers, soon as the ops fake made it a competition in that bitch, four of them started getting up out of there. Four of them, it was all good. Everybody going to school every day when all the guys in that bitch. Soon as the ops migrated in that bitch and making an even playing field, motherfucker getting up out of there. Niggas ain't even wanna, nigga ain't even wanna, ain't even wanna got them be in that bitch. I'm for them. So LA going in that bitch, folks fighting, niggas ain't helping, niggas getting up out of there, acting like they ain't see niggas and shit. So, just as mentioned recently, DB had a teacher who was close to him, who helped him and his friends and was also there in his private life. For example, when Poppy from Tyquin World was shot dead, she was there with DB and his friends at his funeral. In the blog post I mentioned earlier, which is basically a whole story about TB's life, she mentioned that she has nothing positive to say about Dunbar's educational establishment. Only 49% of the young people in the area graduated from high school. However, DB was good in school and graduated from Dunbar in 2015. However, he was close to not being allowed to do so when he was suspended from school just a few months before the last week in school. The suspension was due to the school seeing him as a gang leader, however, TB got the chance to return to school a week later. The teacher who was close to TB also told about how she used to drive home TB and his friends to their neighborhood to make sure they came home safe. She also helped TB get a job for the summer after high school. TB told her that he was upset that he did not have a job and that he asked her to help him. She told him who was in charge and if he wanted a job he should show up every day and ask for one, and tell them he was willing to do anything at all, including clean the toilets. It worked. He got a job at the coffee shop down the street. He loved the job and had pride in getting it. TB came into criminal life around 2012 to 2013 after he started hanging out with other young members from Jaro City and STL slash EBT such as KI, who pretty much taught DB and other younger members like Lil Bubba, LC, and Richie Jerk how to rob people and how to do hits. When you grow up in an area like TB did, where gangs are as palpable as they actually are, when all your friends are involved, your closest friends can be in danger, you yourself can be killed just because you stay around your friends, then it is very difficult to stay away from that life. In the years when TB came up, there was no Taekwon world of which he would later be a member. TB was originally one of many shorties from Jaro City together with people like I mentioned earlier, Tuan, Lil Bubba and Richie Jerk. Sure, Taekwon was killed in the summer of 2012, but it took a long time before Taekwon world established itself as its own set. Taekwon World was first one of many branches within Jaro City. There are, for example, Tutu Gang and Hottie World. I will now tell you the story of Taekwon World and why it took so long to establish itself, it all depended on one person, K.I. On June 24, 2012, Taekwon Tyler was shot dead outside a party in the 6200 block of South Rhodes Avenue, Jaro Territory. 13-year-old Taekwon was at a party with his 19-year-old sister when a fight broke out around 1.20 a.m. The two siblings ran away from the party and onto a street and then into a nearby alley. 
two older guys, Wayne and Nate from Jaro City followed them and fired shots at Taekwon, striking him once in the chest. Taekwon collapsed in the alley and when paramedics found him, he was already dead on the spot. According to police, neither Taekwon nor his sister were in a gang. However, it is quite well known that Taekwon was a member of the same gang as his killer, Nate and Wei, who were members of Jaro City. It was no coincidence that Taekwon was killed. He was best friends with none other than K.I. from STL slash EBT, who we got to know through FBG Buddha, who originally came from Jaro. The three became very close friends around the middle of 2011, roughly after OD from Wick City was killed. Taekwon jumped off the porch in early 2012. He did not shoot any ops yet, but he went on robbing sprees almost every other week along with K.I. and Buddha. They often robbed people from dips at 650, E block and even guys from his own set, Jaro City. Taekwon was taught by Jakira to rob older guys, because the younger ones were not close to the older members so it did not matter if they did anything against them. The older guys were also less likely to retaliate in any type of way, because older guys have in many cases stopped playing with guns, stopped shooting and killing people. For the most part, it worked for Taekwon, along with K.I. he robbed multiple people from different sets they actually were cool with. Taekwon's robbing spree, along with him starting to hang with STL's main killers made his name ring bells, and he became well known across the GD sets in the area, but also for their main enemies, O'Block and 600. Taekwon made himself a big target. All it took was for someone to not care about his age and try to kill him, and that's exactly what happened in early 2012 when he got shot at for the first time by King Von. A few weeks prior to the incident, Von had gotten shot at by K.I. and Wooski on King Drive. Von luckily managed to escape the situation and was not touched by any bullets. A few weeks after that incident, Von and Scud from a block walked around on EBT's block, looking to score. They spotted Taekwon, Wooski and K.I. across the street and started shooting at them without hitting anyone and K.I., Wooski and Taekwon were quickly out of sight as they ran away through a nearby alley. About a month and a half before Taekwon's death, he made a big mistake, he robbed Nate from Jaro City. Taekwon did not know that this particular OG was a killer, and one of the guys who did not qualify as a stain or lick he could hit. Nate was really with it, even at that age. He could not tolerate Taekwon getting away with robbing him. K.I. was actually familiar with this information and tried to make things right between the two, and succeeded for a while. It was all cool between the two for a couple of weeks because K.I. thought she had talked Nate into it by saying that Taekwon did not know better, because he was just a child. All of this only for a couple of weeks later for Nate to hit up Wayne and plot on killing Taekwon, which they did and ended up getting locked up for. After the murder of Taekwon, Taekwon World was formed, which at first was just another name for Jaro City just like 2-2 Gang or Hadi World. Taekwon World was actually never supposed to become its own set, even people like K.I. and Lil Bubba, 
who's obviously a member of it now, was against the whole idea of creating Taekwon World. The reason for this was because the people who came up with the idea around mid-2013 did not know Taekwon so well, which is why K.I. and others did not like it. Taekwon's death was also a reason why K.I. became bitter against Jaro City, others swept it under the rug and did not blame Jaro as a whole. Duchi was also bitter against Jaro in the beginning but got over it after a few years. What made the relationship between K.I. and Jaro City even worse, was that Jaro seemed to co-sign the idea of Taekwon World, with the majority of Taekwon World being made up of guys from Jaro City, along with a couple of STL members like K.I.'s brother, who was also close to Taekwon, just like herself, and Lucky, who claimed Taekwon World at first but went back to mostly affiliating himself with just STL, because what many people do not know, about half of Taekwon World was always looked at as Goofy's trying to get Cloud off Taekwon's name. But after many of the shorties like Lil Bubba, DB, Tuan, D-Money, LC and others started to do more in the streets and eventually started to catch bodies, it became its own set. Truth to be told, if K.I. still had been alive today she would probably have been Taekwon World herself after all. The reason I say this is because K.I. was on the verge of taking D. Thang's idea, starting her own thing, with her being the captain of the team. A few months prior to K.I.'s death, more and more shorties started to claim Taekwon World and not too long after K.I. was killed, the shorties started claiming Taekwon World for real and established themselves as its own set. The younger people that K.I. once brought up started to put in heavy work and became a major problem for Oblock. Now back to the story, just as I just mentioned, a few months before K.I.'s death, many younger members from Jaro and STL slash EBT started claiming Taekwon World, and that was also around the time when the first body dropped from Taekwon World. Of course I'm talking about the murder that got D. Rose life imprisonment, the killing of Big V from Taekwon World. This murder would change TB's life forever, because what not many know, D.E.B. was actually present when Big V got shot to death. Chicago police said that Venzel Richardson, 14, also known as Big V, was walking with three to five other teens in the 6100 block of South Vernon Avenue about 8.20 p.m. February 12, 2014, a wide vent pulled up and a gunman inside opened fire. Richardson, who was walking home from a convenience store, was shot in the head and died on the scene. The people who was rumored to have been in the van was D. Rose, C. Day and Lil Boo from 600, and Lil Loss from Front Street. D. Rose and Lil Loss were allegedly the ones that let off the shots, and according to D. Money, 13 years old, who cooperated with the police, it was D. Rose who shot Big V from inside the van. He recognized D. Rose from social media and Chief Keith videos he said. The friends Big V was walking with were T.B., D. Money, Mook. Xi and White Mike from Taekwon World. Big V got shot in the head right in front of them. DB and the others luckily managed to dodge the bullets and the van drove off. I will go through this whole case in another video. My click is unique. We stay on the mic. We never go to sleep. Always on the grind, never waste time. We avoid crime, bad busting rhymes. My swag is to hustle, not to cause trouble. Whatever you do, I can do double.
This was not the first time TB lost someone, even though his former teacher stated that he was never the same after one of his best friends Venzel was murdered right in front of him. TB was close to several people from STL slash EBT and Jaro who died in both 2011 and 2012, many of them went to the same school together. He was close to people like Tutu, Lil B, Dale and Modell. Taekwon World had also lost a member a month before Venzel was killed, Lil Mo. He was shot to death by Manny Fresh from STL slash EBT, this after Lil Mo beat up his sister while they were dating. Manny Fresh whose real name is Daryl Lee, got charged with the murder but eventually beat it in trail and got released in 2020. This was an individual internal event and it stayed there. Most took Manny Fresh's side because many thought he was doing the right thing, in addition he is one of STL slash EBD's originals. In addition, Taekwon World was still not in motion by that time, understand me right. There were many who claimed Taekwon World but it was not its own set in the same way as it is today. It was very mixed in the beginning, most claiming both Jaro and Taekwon World, or STL slash EBT and Taekwon World, TW was not as strong and organized back then as it is now. Almost exactly two months after the murder of Enzel, it was time for the next murder, the murder of the person who was actually closest to Taekwon, and who was against the whole idea of forming Taekwon World, I'm talking about the murderer of K.I. as I have gone through both in the video about herself, and the video about King Von, because he was one of the killers. So there's no point in going deeper into that murder. It was really after this assassination it all culminated, and Taekwon World really became its own group of members who only claimed Taekwon World, they were no further than the branch of Jaro City even though they were still close to them. DB, LC, Dwayne, Bubba, Demoney, Mook and other shorties that KI once upon a time had brought up now started putting in work in Taekwon World's name and put themselves on the map. About two weeks after the murder of KI, Taekwon World, with the help of STL slash EBT, showed what they had learned from her. Lil Tuan from Taekwon World and Can't Get Right from STL slash EBT were on the hunt to get payback for KI, they pretty much did not care who they got and killed a member called Lil Sam from a block. Taekwon World was now in full effect and the next year, 2015, DB would catch his first body, a childhood friend, as payback for his childhood friend. Now we have come to April, 2015, the year and month when TB allegedly caught his first body. The murder of Capo from Front Street. What makes this event and story so incredibly tragic and sad is that Capo and TB were childhood friends, they had been friends for over 10 years. Played together as kids and ate from the same table. Even when they got older, even though they ended up on different sides, they still kept in touch and met. However, that would change and it was all due to the murder of Big V, where Front Street was involved. A few months after the murder of Big V, Capo started mocking Big V, and that was when TB and Capo started fall out with each other. It all got even worse when Capo started mocking Lil Mo who I talked about earlier, and Lil Mo was actually TB's cousin. The friendship was gone between the two. TB felt very offended by Capo who could not even refrain from mocking his dead cousin. It was at this point that DB allegedly decided to hunt him down and kill him. It all went down on April 20th, 2015. This was an easy score for DB, he knew where and how Capo used to move on the street. Taekwon World was in traffic and drove around King Drive, they spotted Capo in the 6000 block of South King Drive. It is rumored that TB jumped out of the car and shot Capo six times in his back, and then hopped back in the car and sped off from the scene. Capo, 
18, whose real name was Marshawn Fleming Jr., was taken to Stroger Hospital in critical condition and later pronounced dead. This was incredibly cold-blooded done by TV, allegedly killing his childhood friend. What makes it even more tragic, sad and disrespectful is that one day after the murder of Capo, TV uploaded a picture on Twitter together with Capo with the text, Everybody knew that you were my brother, along with another picture from his other Twitter account with the text, Show respect to my Browski. I do not know what to call this type of behavior, if it's sociopathic or psychopathic, or just simply tragic. Two days after the murder a Taekwon World member also tweeted, Biko in the cut like 2-2, better watch your back. As you all know, D.B. was also a rapper and in the song Sacked Up, together with Poppy and Richie Jerk, D.B. refers to the murder of Capo with the line, caught his first body, threw up in a sink. D.B. also tweeted a day after the murder that it felt like he was going to throw up, and that his mind was broken. Now many are probably wondering how people really found out that it was D.B. who allegedly murdered him. Well it was because D.B. used to DM a fan on Twitter about all his bodies, and there is still a screenshot left from that chat, where D.B. sent a screenshot of Capo's Instagram page. I do not know why D.B. did this, if it was because he wanted to brag about who he allegedly killed, or if he wanted the fan to put it out on YouTube to boost his reputation in the streets. Either way, this is the reason why the internet knows about this and all his other alleged bodies. Like he was in a ring Caught his first body threw up in the sink Full numb and stuck up, we stuffing our crust After the murder of his childhood friend Capo, it was fairly quiet out on the street between Taekwon World and their rivals. However, both sides were still active and shot up each other's hoods back and forth. DB and Bubba were Taekwon World's most active members in 2015. At one point they shot up 600 and a block almost every week together. They were extremely close around this time. Although no bodies were dropped after Capo, Taekwon World managed to shoot several members from 600, O Block and Front Street. In March 2015, Joey from O Block was shot in the face by LC from Taekwon World. Fortunately, Joey survived the shot but the bullet went through his right eye and tragically blinded him. Taekwon World gave LC the nickname LC Lee them blind after the incident. Towards the end of 2015, it started to get really hot between Taekwon World and 600. In September 2015, Taekwon World was close to equalizing the score with 600, it is rumored that Lil Bubba caught bike down from 600 on his bicycle on a street and shot him two or three times. Bite down luckily survived the shooting and later that year, Bite down shot up a car filled with Taekwon World members. Later in December, Lil Tuan shot both Michi and Kwano from Front Street in a block. Both survived. However, the next year, 2016, would top 2015, because bodies started to drop. Taekwon World established itself further and O Block actually began to see Taekwon World as a threat, however, 
they were still not that worried about them. The more experienced members who already had bodies under their belts like D-Roy, E-Dog, BJ, Duke and Gleesh still focused more on Jaro City and STL slash EBT, while the younger members like DQ, Muwap and Cheno had to take care of Taekwon World, but that would change after 2016. Now we have come to the year 2016, and you can actually describe that year with one sentence. Taekwon World, STL slash EBT and Jaro City gave a block, Front Street and 600 Hell in 2016. They literally torched them, mostly for what they did while King Bun was out, dropping P5, Boss Trell, KI and Modell. The gang that probably went most crazy out of the three was Taekwon World, and not least DB who became one of the most feared members from their side after allegedly catching three bodies in the same year. So much happened in 2016 and in order not to confuse anything, I will go through everything in chronological order. In June 2016, the 17th to be exact, it is rumored that TB caught his second body, this time on Nico Gang. It is rumored Nico Gang had been shooting at Taekwon World members earlier in 2016 and one of the shooters was apparently a member named Melvin, also known as Melvo. Taekwon World, who did not quite take Nico Gang that seriously since they mostly consisted of shorties, therefore decided to try to catch a member from Nico Gang. It is rumored that DB and Lil Daryl from Jaro City were the ones who took on the task of trying to kill a member of Nico Gang. On June 17, 2016 they succeeded. Melvo was sitting in a car together with his friend in an alley in the 6500 block of South Hamilton Avenue. DB and Lil Daryl allegedly walked up to the car and asked them where they were from. According to the friend in the car, Melvo replied, I'm not about that. Then DB and Lil Daryl allegedly opened fire and shot Melvo in the head. His friend luckily managed to get out of the car and escape the situation without any harm. DB and Lil Daryl fled the scene and were never caught. Melvo, 16, whose real name was Melvin Cook, who lived in the 5700 block of South Calumet, was pronounced dead at the scene at 9.27 p.m. Melvin's mother, Lekasia, was totally broken after she found out about the shooting, she said, I do not know what to do, I do not know how I'm going to bury him. I just bought a plane ticket to Mississippi. And now he's dead. Exactly one month after the murder of Melvo it was time again. D.B. was, according to rumors, yet again involved in murder that took place on July 17, 2016. This time, a body from a block was dropped. I'm talking about the murder of B.J.'s little brother, Cheno. However, 
There is a lot of controversy surrounding this murder, as members of OBLOC believe that Taekwon World and STL slash EBT had nothing to do with the murder of Cheno, which they also said about Big A, which turned out to be true. G.I. Joe and Can't Get Right had nothing to do with the murder of Big A, which Muwap pointed out in a discussion with Richie Jerk from Twitter in 2017. Just as I have mentioned in previous videos, take my videos with a grain of salt, not everything is true, it's all rumors. However, I will still tell the theory that STL slash EBT and Taekwon World were actually the ones who got Cheno, as well go through what argues that it was not them, and that it was actually no Love City who got him. Cheno was walking with his girlfriend in the 5700 block of South Union Avenue, which is MOE no Love City territory, and actually the street where King Bond's sister Kayla grew up. A car pulled up and according to Cheno's former teacher, who made a post about his death, they asked Cheno where he and his friend could get some weed. Cheno is said to have answered, I have no idea. Then they exchanged some more words on the one he was talking to, pulled up a gun and shot him in the chest. Cheno fell to the ground and his girlfriend ran in panic from the scene. Moments later, the other man in the car took the gun and hopped out of the car, and emptied the rest of the clip into Cheno's chest. Cheno was found lifeless at the scene and taken to St. Bernard Hospital, where he sadly was ultimately pronounced dead. The first theory and the theory that most people know about is that it was Taekwon World that killed Cheno. According to that theory, no Love City members spotted Cheno and gave Taekwon World the drop on him. Then Poppy, D.E.B. and Can't Get Right got in traffic and spotted him. Poppy was allegedly the one that pulled out his gun and shot Cheno in the chest, and that D.B. was the one who jumped out of the vehicle and emptied the rest of the clip into Cheno's chest. It is rumored that he did that due to the fact that he had personal issues with Cheno, and had even mentioned him in several tweets two months before the murder. What suggests that this theory is true is that there is Facebook posts from a block members, friends and family that is mocking Poppy and saying RIP to Cheno the same day Poppy was killed, and the day after. It is very common for members to say RIP to friends when their killers die, it does not have to mean that it is actually the killer. It can also mean that they have taken revenge by killing one of their members. But just as we saw after the murder of King Vaughn, where several members and family said RIP to Vaughn's alleged victims, it usually means that their killer is dead. What contradicts this theory, however, is that Cheno would never have stood and talked that way with Poppy, D.B. and can't get right. He would have recognized them immediately and run away, because he knew who they were and what they looked like. However, this argument depends a lot on whether it is actually true what the teacher said about them exchanging words seconds before he was shot. The second theory, just as I mentioned in the previous paragraph, is that it was no Love City who actually got Cheno. According to that theory, it was Juju and Zo from no Love City that killed Cheno in their own territory. What supports this theory is that Chino's ex-girlfriend, TK, openly wrote on Twitter that Zo killed Cheno. Days after the murder of Cheno, Several tweets from both members from 600 and O Block indicated that it was NLC and Zo who were behind the murder. Just a day after the murder, Muwap tweeted, FMOE. 
However, a member from MOE responded to the tweet, and said that MOE had nothing to do with it. Just days after the murder, Waldo from 600, and man from a block also started writing to Zoe from NLC on Twitter and wrote, people will get up with you. However, there is quite a lot that speaks against this theory. The first thing that speaks against it is that O Block and NLC are hardly enemies. Both Cheno and his brother BJ are both originally from No Love City and have a lot of family there. Both Boss Top and Big also came from NLC. Both Boss Top and BJ still have contact with some people from NLC. Cheno was often out with friends in NLC's territory, he had several pictures from the street where he was killed. It does not make any sense to me why NLC would kill him, like I said, they are barely enemies. They may not be cool with each other like that since Lamron and the block are tight, but bodies have never been dropped between the two and no shots have been sent. What seems most likely to me is that Zoe, who was close to STL slash EBT and Taekwon World, gave Cheno's location to Can't Get Right who got in traffic with DB and Poppy. Like I said before, DB had personal issues with Cheno since Cheno shot DB's cousin Young in the back. What is also strange is that after the murder of Cheno, Chino Gang on 57 and Low was formed which was created by a group of GDs who is cool with a block. That may be the reason why King Von, in a live stream on Instagram, said that Low is cool. They got big roaches in the park, right? Oh, for them, it's fucked up on 62nd, 63rd. They got some nice little models. And no love, dirty as hell, they lame as hell. No love, it's not dirty, that's fine. GD ass hood. That shit lame as hell, bro. No love, it's lame, but it's yeah. dirty. No love, they lame as Which part of no love you talking about? I'm speaking nice, nigga. What, what street? Union. <laughs> lame as fuck, I'm kidding. I thought you was going to say M. You yeah. should have said lower M. What's yeah. some of them? Trying to go on low. Low cool. That's the only one. DB was extremely active throughout 2016. Probably the most active member from both Taekwon World and STL slash EBT. One month after Cheno was killed, DB caught just below from 600. He shot at him and tried to chase him down. Luckily, without success. The next month, in September, TB was extremely close to catching his fourth body. It is rumored that TB caught Mano from Front Street and shot him as his face. Fortunately, Mano miraculously survived the shooting. Mano has today left the criminal life after his brother, Jamo from Mob, sadly got killed by Get Back Gang the following year, 2017. Another member from Taekwon World who was also close to catching a body that month was TB's close friend Poppy who is rumored to have caught Jock, from 800, off guard, shooting him in his chest. 800 is a set that basically has war with everybody. Jock was mocking Big V on Facebook which led to the shooting. Jock luckily survived. Two times from Taekwon World actually mentioned this incident in his Crazy Story remix in 2018. Later in November 2016, it is rumored that Duck shot D-Roy in the hand. Taekwon World. Jaro and STL slash EBT really were going crazy. The month after T-Roy was shot in the hand, in December, DB would catch his fourth body, 
the third and final body of the year, and it was yet again a member affiliated with Oblock. Got the drop on this goofy nigga. Dirty on the block, we let out shots. Almost hit his top. Heard that was a job. The fuck was you doing right there? Trying to stand on the beat like your ass wasn't getting popped. But I'm just saying, but I ain't trying to snitch on my man. The rest up can't pop a dot. And that's folks twin, so I'm. Now we come to TB's last alleged body of the year. I'm talking about the murder of Lil Chris for MetLife, or Block. The reason I wrote both O Block and MetLife is simply because Lil Chris pretty much claimed both. MetLife is considered by many a mix of members from a block, 600 and Front Street. I will make a video only about the history of MetLife in the future. Lil Chris lived in Parkway Gardens but was never an official member of a block. Chris mostly claimed the buildings, 6217, which is MetLife. His father and cousin Guan also claimed MetLife and were also BDs. Chris also had a brother, Carlito who is a member from a block, and his cousin D Nice, who is Guan's brother, also claim a block. Chris was also the cousin of Shaq, blessed his ass and Hudo from 600. Lil Chris was close with several people from a block like Hocho and BJ, this affiliation, and with him living in Parkway was the main reason why he got killed. In late 2016, just four days before the new year began. Lil Chris was sadly shot to death inside Parkway Gardens. Chris, 23, whose real name was Christopher D. Brown, was walking in the 6400 block of South King Drive just after 5 p.m. when two people approached and fired two shots, which of one striking him in the head. Chris was sadly pronounced dead on the scene. The two people who ran up on him are rumored to have been G.I. Joe and, yeah I think you can guess, D.B. About a dozen people crowded near the crime scene tape as officers investigated the shooting. Brown's body, covered by a wide sheet, lay on the ground between two buildings. Several residents watched from their balconies and windows. Others stood outside in the cold. One woman, who said she has lived in Parkway Gardens housing for about a year, said she heard two gunshots before police arrived. I can't believe I'm sitting here looking at a dead body she said. Another resident who was arriving home from work stood outside. She said she moved to Parkway Gardens about six months ago, but doesn't allow her young son to play outside. This is just the wrong neighborhood to hang out in. This is sad she said. Too many lives are getting lost over here, in just this one complex.
Now we have come to the year 2017, which is pretty much the end game of this story. This year would go down as one of the bloodiest years between OB600 and Taekwon World, Jaro and STL slash EBT, much thanks to TB allegedly catching his fifth body, which was not just anyone. Most people probably already know by now who I am referring to, of course I'm talking about a block's biggest loss of all time, together with King Von, D-Roy. As you already know, D-Roy was an outstanding member from a block, a small guy with the heart of a lion. T-Roy and King Von, who were best friends, were one of the deadliest duo in Chicago around that time, both are rumored to have had 5 to 7 bodies each, and really carried a block throughout difficult times when STL slash EBT and Jaro were passing out a lot of smoke. Just like I mentioned earlier in the story, DB had roots in Paxtown since his dad was an OG from there, and also had cousins in that area. DB also lived in the 7000 block of South Paxton, which is only a few blocks away from where T-Roy was killed. T-Roy and TB knew about each other before it all went down, obviously TB knew about T-Roy since he was a high profile member from a block, and T-Roy knew about DB after catching body after body in 2016, along with DB being a rapper and had released his most famous song, Taekwon Way, in January 2017. A month before the murder, D.B. had also mocked T-Roy on his Twitter. Both were out after each other, D.B. wanted to get rid of arguably the most high-profile member from a block, and T-Roy wanted to put D.B. in his place and show both T.B. and Taekwon World who was the real hitter. There has for a long time been rumored that D.Roy was in Paxtown looking for T.B. the day he was killed, whether that's true or not I do not know. However, Lil Tuan from Taekwon World in his song 62 Dead Ops, indicated that it is actually true when he rapped, Her T-Roy got hit, why the fuck he was trying to lurk. T-Roy got hit, why the fuck he was trying to lurk? Say he tried to run, but he wind up tripping on that big ass shirt On Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2017, T.B. caught his fifth body, T-Roy's life would end, and T.B. pretty much got his death warrant. T-Roy was walking on the 2000 block of East 71st Street in the South Shore area, allegedly looking for T.B. D.E.B. had several pictures of him standing on the exact street, and especially outside a sports shop on that street. That day, T-Roy was out by himself looking for D.B. and decided to go to the street where he had seen pictures of D.B., to see if he was there. It is then rumored to have been Brick from STL slash EBT who spotted him and called T.B. to give him T-Roy's location. It was no wonder that it was Brick who spotted D-Roy because Brick, just like D.B., lived in Paxtown around that time. When TB got the call, he picked up two times and can't get right and went to the location, but D-Roy, who was on full alert since he was lurking, spotted them and upped his gun on them and tried to chase them down. TB and the others ran and got away and went to their apartment, grabbed guns and dressed up completely black. They went back to the location and spotted T-Roy going into the store. TB waited until he was inside and then ran to the door, opened it, spotted T-Roy, who did not have time to react or up his gun, and T-B shot him in chest and fled the scene with can't get right in two times. The whole hit went down like a cat and rat game, first T-Roy was out looking for D-B, Brick spotted T-Roy and called D-B who came with CGR in two times, T-Roy spotted them and tried to chase them down, they got away and went back to their apartment, and went back to the location with loaded weapons, dressed in all black and shot D-Roy. D.B. and the others were actually close to abandoning the mission, it was a huge risk, D-Roy was on full alert and it could have ended up the other way around, but it didn't. T-Roy, 23, whose real name was James Johnson, was taken to Northwestern Memorial Hospital in critical condition with a gunshot wound to the chest, and was later sadly pronounced dead.
close, he went to the stove. We need high hop on. Folks said this don't go, but you know, folks, you wanna try and hit that. You can try and get to his tracks, and daily with chill. Folks to go post on the one, just to get off his pack. He knew I told him, then like, bros, you know it. We gotta watch our back. We told him, like, fuck it, they just gonna walk on the strip to see who was that on the set. But then I'm like, damn, you don't see food trying to creep. Folks like, damn, where he at? We get out of jail, see food up the stick on my mans, and we had to run the whole lap. We went to the trap, and we went to grab the cat. Dressed up in all black, he double back. Bitch, you walk up, game. Folks got hit in his neck, but it hit his chest. Motherfucker run up on me, I will shoot you. No problem. I will fucking shoot you. Guess I will. So if you see me and ain't no shit, leave me the fuck alone. Damn, they on here talking about what you think about T-Roy getting popped. <laughs> Damn, T-Roy got popped? When did that happen? When did T-Roy get popped? Damn, somebody popped him. Is he dead? Is he dead? Did, did he die? Damn, merch did they pop T-Roy? It must don't be, it ain't, it must ain't that important shit. It ain't all over the internet. I ain't see it, shit. He must not be dead. You know, I mean, I'm gonna figure this shit out. Just be cool out though. I call folks, I call folks. It's like, this sound like Valentine's Day, you see what I'm saying? I call folks and shit, I'm calling, I call, I call. Nah, I call my mama, I call my mama. My mama call. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Now we, nah, we try to call T-Rush and Aunt. They try to call T-Rush and Aunt. Uh, I win, I win, I win, I win. Nah, nah, nah. Ah. What I do? Alright, alright. I got to call somebody. I probably call a hoe or something. I call a Zarius. I call a bitch or something. I call a hoe. Then, wham. I call my mama back. Man, she crying and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? What you crying for? You good? You know what I'm saying? She, ooh, they shot T-Roy. T-Roy got... Now, what? Who? What? Look at the phone. You know how that shit go? You in jail? You can tell. Hold on, what? Ah, all right, all right. Mm. Now, we calling, we calling, we calling. Right? What's going on? What's going on? You got hit, you got hit, you got hit one. Some shit, ooh. No, damn, 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 damn. What the fuck going on out there? I'm T-Roy, got shot, look, look, this is the thing, y'all don't know T-Roy. Y'all got to leave our history of T-Roy, y'all don't know. Uh, T-Roy got to go for the, that's T-Roy. T-Roy, that's T-Roy, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know T-Roy like I know T-Roy, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so when I hear he get shot, on. the fuck he? He don't want to talk me like, don't be lacking, oh, don't be, oh, don't be, you know? He was on me, he used to be on, he used to be on each other, you know what I'm saying? Because me and him. We back to back with my boy, you know what I'm saying? Folks got shot, I said, hold on. I said, the streets, hold on. Who got shot, who? Now my ear gangster, he, he got shot before. He a gangster. They said, folks ain't make it on front of my I play it out, you know me, you know you gotta play it out. You in jail, it's all type of goofy ass niggas around. You know these niggas thirsty, these niggas. All of your business on King, they like, walk it off, walk it off. Let us sit in, you know. 
Now my homie from out west, I fuck some niggas out west, Willie D and them and uh, nigga Junior on four now. I fuck up them niggas hard, okay? They do the same game. Now they see me, they, I'm just walking around in circles on the deck, you know? And they put their arm around me. When I'm like, damn, you good, bro? You good? What's wrong with you, Vaughn? Yeah, I'm good. Ooh, they, what's wrong? You just got a farm, man. I'm, I'm good, you know? They what happened? I mean, they, they just killed T-Roy. Ooh, he what? They, I'm T-Roy. They just, they just killed T-Roy. Oh, I got to break it down, on King Dave, that shit. I couldn't help it. They hug. They, they hug me. These some real niggas. You see what I'm saying? We grown ass men. Folks grab me to hold me and shit. You get to there, you gonna be Irish, but you gonna be out of. Oh, hold on, boy, that's my best friend, boy. Ain't talking about they just killed my best friend while I'm in jail. I'm in that bitch, gonna go crazy. Oh, I'm in that bitch, don't know what's going on. I'm in that bitch, in that. What the fuck, who the fuck is y'all? I'm in that bitch, mad on. Oh, yeah, I'm in that bitch, in that. Nah, not my best friend, you know what I'm saying? I'm in that bitch, in that. If he get got. And a, a lot of hope for a lot of niggas, cause he be. Y'all know how folks see us, man. Niggas know T Royal. Oh, niggas know T Royal. Oh, let me see who all up. The guys know the guys is looking like, oh, this nigga preaching on. Oh, no chip, you know. Taekwon World did not stop here. Two months later, in April, Taekwon World shot Buka, Manny, and Porky from 600, and later on shot Domo from 600. But as you all know, the consequences of the murder of D-Roy would be horrific. Get Back Gang was created and dropped body after body on Jaro, STL slash EBT and Taekwon World. It came out pretty quickly who it was who allegedly killed T-Roy, DB was self-snitching in songs where he said things like, Oh Block Savage, watch him die like 600 times along with, Get Back Gang my best work, and tweets saying, You all won't ever get back. FBG Brickrapped. Play with my brothers, I make one phone call, Habiko get back on that bullshit in the song leave him right there just couple of months after the murder. But just like I said, the consequences would be horrific. The older members from a block who already had bodies under their belts, along with a couple of lion-hearted shorties formed get back gang. People like E Dog, Duke, Capfuck12, Gleesh, Muwap, DQ, Makado, and not least E-Roy's little brother HK, started to turn up. Only three months after the murder of D-Roy, Get Back Gang killed Lil Ho from Jaro City. One month later, Jamo from Mob was killed. A month after that, HK killed TB's close friend Poppy from Taekwon World, with a bullet to his head. Almost exactly one month later, both FBG Duck's brother Brick from STL slash EBT and his cousin Kobe Mac from Taekwon World were killed. Bodies were really dropped like flies, RB600 made sure to get the job done on every hit, no mistakes, and three months later, HK got what he promised, revenge for his brother's death. Even know what the fuck you yelling? Oh, block savage, watch him die 600 times. True, 40 for shorty, I swear. Get back, game my best work. TWSB, we won't back home.
TB was totally heartbroken after his day one friend Poppy, was shot and killed on June 16, 2017. Duke and HK found out his whereabouts and pulled to the location. HK allegedly got out of the dark colored vehicle and shot Poppy in the head who was later pronounced dead on the hospital. DB's former teacher I told you about earlier, attended Poppy's together with DB, and that was the last day she saw him. She wrote that she was mad at him and was almost shook when she saw him walk in at Poppy's wake and made some rude noise and muttered some inappropriate words. Terry left quickly that night. As Poppy's funeral ended the next day, the teacher wrote that she knew she had to talk to Terry. As she looked at him deep into his eyes and told him she was mad at him, she loved him just the same. Jesus would forgive him she said, and that he could and should come to North Carolina with her and start his life all over again. He prayed with her, Terry never denied a prayer for him or with him. They hugged, but not for long enough. Both cried as they stood there, mostly for Poppy, and for how hard life was and how your choices do not always feel like an actual choice. She wrote that she knew that D.B. had lost hope and so did she. I personally think D.B. knew what was coming, he saw his friends being dropped all around him, and knew that it was him they mainly were after. You see, I be in that bitch all the time, Lola. Don't I, Pop? Pop. I'm playing. Oh, yeah. You mean that bitch with you, bro? BDK, man. man Y'all already know me and my ten year, my brother, right here. We sit out of the bar. This shit. Over. Passing that dope. He passed me that Dutchie. Yeah, He's smoking yeah. out the Dutch. On September 26, 2017, D.B.'s time would sadly come. D.B. was out with side from Jaro City in the 7000 block of South Chapel Avenue, which is a three-minute walk from where he dropped T-Roy. I think D.B. would have survived longer if he stopped hanging out in that area. It was not smart of him to be there. O'Block knew where to look for him, just as T-Roy knew. I'm pretty sure this was not the first time HK was out in that area looking for TB. I'm pretty sure he had been looking for TB for weeks around those streets. On September 26th, he finally got him. With the help of Moose Block giving out TB's location, HK, Makato and Gleesh, got in traffic. They drove to the location and spotted TB inside. It is rumored that HK and Makato jumped out of the car. HK shot DB in the head and Makoto shot side in the head, and went back to the car and sped away from the scene. DB, only 21 years old, of the 7000 block of South Paxton, was pronounced dead at 1.23 p.m. at Northwestern Hospital. Side, however, luckily and miraculously survived the headshot, but was sadly killed with motor two years later. Rest in peace both. Just like always when a high profile member is killed, and especially when the member that O'Block was really out looking for was killed, it pours in mockery and disrespectful comments towards the person who was killed, in this case, DB. When TB died, it was also fully confirmed that he was the one who allegedly killed T-Roy. Lil Gerald tweeted several tweets saying, Long live T-Roy Slayer. Elsie from Taekwon World called him, Mr. T-Roy Slayer and that he became a legend after he did that hit, which says a lot about what a big heart and courage, both for good and evil, D.B. had in the streets to take out such a high-profiled member as T-Roy. Get Back Gang continued their murder spree after the death of T.B. Just two days later, they killed Fridio from Jaro City. However, two months after the murder of D.B., it is rumored that Taekwon World got their revenge when Lil Cho, Wooski and Skinny killed HK inside Parkway Gardens. However, a lot of people, including HK's family, 
are saying that this is not true and that HK was killed by other BEDs, but that story is for another video. It was fairly quiet on the streets after HK's murder, but Get Back Gang was not done. In the summer of 2018, it is rumored that Duke and Muwap dropped Can't Get Right from STL slash EBT. Four months later, Dusky from Mob was killed by 600, followed by Waldo being killed by Mob the day after. The murder of Dusky led to Wooski, along with five other people, getting shot at Dusky's funeral. Just three days into the new year, 2019, both Motor and Side from Jaro City were killed. Three months after that, Jay Ski from the front street was killed, allegedly by Lil Rob from Jaro City and two times from Taekwon World. In early 2020, DQ's brother Jado was killed, allegedly by Lil Bubba and D-Money from Taekwon World. O-Block shorties later killed FBG Duck in the summer, two of the shooters were allegedly c Thang and T-Roy, Slutty and HK's brothers Al, and just a month ago, D-Money from Taekwon World was killed. This pretty much sums up the events of recent years. Taekwon World is still active, probably more active than STL slash EBT and Jaro City. Much of the beef that is going on now is between a block shorties and Taekwon World shorties.
About four months after the murder of Can't Get Right, it is rumored that it was Wooski and Nella from Hottie Way, who was close to putting away one of CGR's killers for good. It is rumored that Duke from O'Block was out in traffic on a bike on 61 and Langley, when shots started to let off towards him. Seven shots were heard according to Spot News, Duke was hit in the leg and luckily managed to escape the situation. STL slash EBT will probably not get such a good chance to catch him again. Duke coming out of jail in April and will be alert. Duke, along with E-Dog, Muwap and DQ are at the top of the list for STL slash EBT and Jaro. They are really desperate to get them because of what they did for Get Back Gang after the murder of T-Roy. Now the story of Terry Berry is over. Usually I make a small description of the person at the end of my videos, but in this video I actually intend to use TB's old teacher's description of DB, since she actually knew him. Her name was Sarah. Terry was kind. He was the kind of guy that would see me struggling with a baby stroller and MJ, and rush over and carry it down my stairs for me. Many days after I left the ministry and moved down the street, I'd come out my front door and find him and Poppy sitting there on my porch. As long as we knew each other and were familiar as we were, he never dropped the miss from the front of my name. The kids at the ministry center where we worked called us all Mr. or Miss and our first name. Miss Sarah. But as the boys got older, and became like family they dropped the miss. None of my boys called me Miss Sarah, except for Terry. He seemed to add that extra layer of respect and I didn't correct him. I wasn't afraid in our neighborhood, and I wasn't disrespected many times. One of the few times I was by an older man from the neighborhood on the street while walking alone, Terry called out and let him know not to mess with me. I'm thankful for Terry and that I had the grace to know him, and love him and be a part of his story. Thank you for watching the video. Comment on what you thought of it. Rest in peace to the people whose lives were taken in the gang wars.